it's time. What time is it? It's Pebble time. The new Pebble time smartwatch. Just got this in the mailbag today and they just raised 20 million bucks on Kickstarter. Can you believe it? Ugh, twice what they raised for their original Pebble watch, which pretty much defined the crowdsourcing uh, industry at the time. It helped legitimize it. And they've developed this new Pebble Time smartwatch and they had about 78,000 backers for this thing. Not that much more than what they had for the first original Pebble Watch, 68,000 backers. But hey, I guess they decided to charge more for this one. Maybe they figured eh, it didn't quite make the profit margin they wanted on the original Pebble Watch anyway. So they upped the price, they got 20 million bucks. And I thought we'd do a quick unboxing. Here we go. So this is the third generation Pebble Watch. They've sold more than a million units since they originally did the Kickstarter campaign. Fantastic. They um, sent it via Singapore Post here and they've uh, declared the value at 179. That'd be uh, Yankee dollars. It is indeed. I think I paid a bit more than that because I wasn't one of the super early backers. And they've got one of these nice little zip openings. And it is, yes folks, made in China. Of course it is. But Let's go. Woohoo! There we go. Oh. And, up. Oh, oh, I opened it upside down. Oh, yes, right. It's time. Duh. There we go. Silly me. So it's all fallen out. Sorry about that. I ruined the unboxing experience. Oh, no. But yeah, they've got the custom molded uh, inserts, uh, silly little user guides, all in Chinese and English. There we go. And yeah, what's that? There it is. Ta da! Hello. McFly, hello. Yeah, that thing was just all this safety and, and warranty and bloody safety prohibited limited liability. Two languages bullshit. And there we have it. Yes, I am a Kickstarter backer. 30 meters water resistance. Oh, I'll test that this weekend. You'll find out about that. And we get a uh, USB charging cable, custom charging cable, and it's magnetic. So does it register pretty easily? Yeah, that's not bad at all. Would have been better if they have uh, inductive charging though. And they have done the right thing and recessed those contacts in there, although I'm sure if you shorted them out, I'm sure the designers would have yeah, figured that out. And it feels like reasonable quality plastic. It's slightly, is that curved? Yeah, it looks slightly curved. So that's really good. And uh, is it feels pretty decent, pretty decent quality. I don't mind that bit of scratchy there. And at first I thought this pin to retain the band was a really neat idea, having the cutout in there with that little thing you could push over. And granted, that will be really easy if you're changing your bands all the time and this thing's a fashion accessory, but I can picture that getting caught on threads or something else and this coming off. So yeah, I don't think I'm all for it now. And there's actually not that much pin penetration into the holder on the side. and That's not terrific. I'm Tugging on this now, got to have a good tug, and uh, that feels pretty good. And the rubber uh, watch straps, eh, they're just pretty ordinary. I like the fact that they're nice and wide though, but there's a pretty decent amount of strength in that. So that's passing the test so far. And they've got Pebble branded into the strap holder, that's not too bad. Um, it feels decent quality on the uh, clasp, looks and feels quite nice. For our own protection, that's Gonski. I don't know why it needs it. It's supposed to be Gorilla Glass. We've got uh, three button interface over here. It looks like we've got a little reset hole through there. You can get a pin in and one main uh, power button on the side. So let's power it up and see what we get. This is supposed to, uh, Pebble, ta-da. It's supposed to have a 64 color e-ink display. Yeah, come on. Is it gonna boot? What's it doing? Yeah, you gotta go to getpebble.com slash app. But, uh, well, hey, come on, you can do it. Do something useful. Come on, damn it. It's a watch. Why can't you tell me the damn time? This is bullshit. The next step is pair your Pebble smartwatch to your smartphone via Bluetooth. Bloody hell, I just want to thing to power up and tell me the damn time. It's a watch after all, is it not? Oh, out of the box, oh, a smartphone app, upgrade your firmware to start using your Pebble smartwatch. Oh. Bullshit. So 20 million bucks worth of development and the damn thing can't even tell me the time out of the box. Oh! This is so frustrating. Download the bloody app just to get started. Ugh! Bloody hell! It can't even take me to the correct link! Ugh! 
And of course it wants my bloody firstborn child too. Ugh. Almost a 12 meg download. And if you got the Pebble Steel Watch, well, you've got to download yet another app. Ugh. And I've got to create a bloody account? Are you shitting me? Whoa, this is heavy. Okay, I think it's attempting to pair it. No. No, what did it do? Nothing. There you go, I can uh, press this retry and then press the up button. I did that. I pressed it. Unbelievable. Oh, we finally bloody well got something. Here we go, Pebble Time, FBE4, that's what I've got on the screen there. So, yeah, connecting. Oh, thank goodness. It's got a little vibrator motor in there. Yeah, you can vibrate where the sun don't shine. Oops. Now I've got a big fat X on there. Come on. The hell? There we go. I had to press the green button and we're all happy green. Uh, oh, checking for updates. Now it's got to download the latest bloody software. Yeah, great. I just got the thing in the mail like an hour ago. <sighs> well, so far, for a couple of hundred bucks, the only time it's telling me is how much time I've wasted setting this stupid thing up and how much time's left to download the bloody latest firmware. Jeez. 98, 99, and we're reconnecting, rebooting. Jeez. Yep, 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 yep. Come on. Come on. It's a bloody watch. It's a bloody watch that has to boot. Unbelievable. Ah, oh, we're in. We're in like Flynn. Finally. That's taken me like bloody half an hour or something to get to this point. Unbelievable. And that's the default time display. That is pathetic. So for 20 million bucks, they can't even afford bloody Roman numerals. So I can go center button and I can get into my settings for my music, my not notifications, the alarms. And watch faces, yay! How do we select it with that thing? TikTok, I don't want bloody TikTok. Is that it? I've probably got to download other watch faces from the damn app thing, store, cloud, bloody thing. Why can't you at least give me like a digital watch face or one with bloody Roman numerals on it? Unbelievable. Now I don't actually mind it on my wrist. I've got a quite a small wrist and it actually fits and feels uh, quite nice, and there's not much um, extra uh, flap in the watch band at all. So that's that's pretty good. I rather like that. And the top bezel around there feels like some sort of metal anyway. And well, it's it's all a bit bland looking. I guess if you wanted a good looking one, you got to get the pebble steel. And here we go. I go into the app, and I can finally choose something different. Why couldn't you give me one of these in the damn? Watch! Unbelievable! There we go. It's got a yeah. It's got a download bloody app. There we go. That's a bit better. Why have the zero on the front? Take out the leading zero. Are you kidding me? Jeez, who wrote that? And as for the e-ink display, well, it does go a bit uh, brighter when you uh, press buttons, and then eventually goes off. It is actually quite dim, and the Angle is not great. That's not just uh, reflections causing that. That's genuinely I can't see that when you know I've got to be you got to be really fairly flat onto the thing. So angle wise, eh, it's got poor reading angle. It really does. Although I must say the electronics engineer in me says yeah, that's one pretty sexy little uh, e-ink screen though. And when you go into the menu like this, it takes you to music. And you can go down like that, but you can also go up one, and that takes you into the settings there. And that just sees 50% uh, battery life left in the sucker, and then we can just set up all our stuff. So that's that's not a bad user interface. And it does actually know that I'm in Sydney, so I guess the uh, app must have uh, told it that. I don't know if they would have uh, shipped it knowing that I was from Sydney. And it's got a motion feature, which is enabled by default, so you can just flick it like that and it becomes a little bit brighter. We're completely in the dark here so you can't ordinarily read it and you flick your wrist and bingo now we can and then it slowly fades out. That's not bad. I like that. But of course one really annoying thing about this is the threshold level. 
Look at that, just opened a door, came on. And I'll tell you what, I really like thin watches and that one is really quite thin. And as I said, I've got a small wrist, so that, you know, it fits really well. It's not too big. There's no gaps under there like that. It's not bulging out. It fits really well. I don't know what would happen with uh, people with big, huge wrists, but anyway, it suits me. And by default, there's a weather app there. So that's all right. Tells me what it's going to be tomorrow. Yeah, that's not too shabby. And we can go into our system information here and we've got our Bluetooth address, our firmware, all sorts of stuff. <gasps> Serial number uptime. Yeah. When was the last time it crashed? And if you're not happy with your smartwatch, you can shut it down. And to boot it back up, oh, that's pretty quick. And it's now the next day, and it's dropped down to 40% battery life. So is that 10% per day? Yeah, I don't know. It's not going to be linear like that. It's battery life claimed up to seven days, but that's going to be totally dependent upon the Bluetooth and how often you use things and all sorts of stuff. So yeah, the verdict's not in yet. And watch out, by default, it's reporting back to Big Brother. I think the date is 1984. And one other thing, I don't see any way to get inside this thing to change the rechargeable battery. So, yeah, if it's dead in a couple of years' time, toss it out. And I don't mind this feature at all. Hold in one of these buttons and you can set up a shortcut and choose what that button does and what that button does. Awesome. There you go, notification works. And it vibrates. Woohoo! And SMS notification works. I'm a nerd. And the other really annoying thing about this is that not a, only do you only get one clock face, you don't even get like a stopwatch on the thing. I mean, give me a break, come on. I do really like the uh, app store though. You just go in here and choose, well, there's tons of them and you can just add. I just added that and it instantly appeared up there. I didn't have to do anything, nice. So there you have it, that's a brief unboxing and play around with the new Pebble Time smartwatch and yeah, out of box experience, just fail, I'm sorry, it should be a watch, can't even include a stopwatch, can't even include a digital time display, unbelievable, but hey, um, it's a decent build quality, don't mind it at all, and it actually, the notifications and everything um, works and all the app and app stores, there's actually ecosystem around it, it seems actually quite good, so as a smartwatch, it's not too shabby at all. So it's just the poor out of box experience really and I had issues connecting it up. It took me for ages and it seemed to just randomly suddenly start working. But once it did, it was okay. But oh, it was just so frustrating. And although this screen might look pretty good on camera here, it's actually in reality a little bit on the dim side. So even if you turn on the backlight, it's not that great. But yeah, okay, limited of the e-ink color display and it's actually not too bad in full sun it's still a little bit dim but it's you know, reasonably readable and you get it on the right angle and it actually gets really quite bright and yes I am going to take my frustration out on this thing this weekend I'm doing the tough bloke competition so I'm gonna take this through mud and crap and obstacles and beat the hell out of it oh that'll make for a good upcoming video and yes I'll do a teardown afterwards catch you next time